I'm your nurse today. So what brings you in? Well, I'm feeling really tired and thirsty and craving salt. And look at my hands. Look at the color. Oh, yes. So I saw on your chart that you've been diagnosed with Addison's disease. So those all coincide with Addison's disease. What is that? The nurse was unfamiliar with Addison's disease, so she attended a seminar on Addison's disease. Today we're here to learn about how Addison's disease affects the physiology of the body. So we're going to begin with the normal physiology of the adrenal glands. They are located one on each top of each kidney, and there are two layers. One of them is called the medulla. The medulla is primarily involved with the sympathetic nervous system and releases epinephrine and norepinephrine in response to stressful situations. The cortex is also um, related to stressful situations and has three layers. The zona reticularis is the innermost layer and releases the androgenic sex hormones. Um, and the zona fasciculata is responsible for the release of glucocorticoids, which are involved in the cellular metabolism within the body. Um, an example of an important glucocorticoid is cortisol, um, and it's responsible for gluconeogenesis. So recall that this is the breakdown of fat into fatty acids and proteins into amino acids, as well as the transport of glucose to things like target cells and also into the brain. Um, so this is one of our key concepts called, or this is one of our key concepts, protein. Um, the outermost layer is the zona glomerulosa. This is responsible for the release of mineral corticoids. Recall that these are involved in the regulation of electrolytes and water balance within the body. One of the most powerful mineral corticoids is aldosterone, uh, which you will recall uh, is involved with the blood pressure system. So it causes increased thirst, vasoconstriction, as well as the resorption of sodium to increase um, blood volume, cardiac output, and therefore blood pressure. Um, this is released via the renin angiotensin mechanism. Um, and if we want to think about cortisol a little bit more, cortisol, well, it's in our blood system, but how does it end up there? How is it regulated? Well, in order to maintain homeostasis, the body uses something called the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Um, and the hypothalamus senses what levels of cortisol are present within the blood. So if the cortisol levels are low, the hypothalamus will in turn release corticotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary, which in turn releases the adrenal corticotropic hormone to the adrenal glands, um, which in turn release cortisol, and they cause gluconeogenesis as already discussed. Okay, so you can see that our three key concepts are really important in the regulation of the adrenal glands and their various functions. So, in the case of Addison's disease, um, the adrenal cortex is actually destroyed. Often uh, in Canada, that's from an autoimmune disorder, or it could be from things like metastatic cancers, or also from a fungal infection. So because that cortex is destroyed, you can see how that would affect each of these layers and their um, respective steroid hormones. Um, androgenic hormones will be, of course, decreased. So in, hu in females, we see decreased pubic hair uh, as well as axillary hair. Uh, in the glucocorticoid circumstance, um, we have um, low levels of cortisol, which the hypothalamus detects and continues to secrete CRH and ACTH. Therefore, we have high ACTH levels in the blood, which continue um, because there is no release of cortisol because the adrenal glands can't respond. Now, that high ACTH level will actually cause the pigmentation of the palms and various creases um, that we see typical of Addison's disease. Um, also, um, the target cells within the body, whether it's on daily regular maintenance or in an acutely stressful situation, are not able to get the glucose um, and other nutrients that we discussed um, during those stressful situations. Um, in the mineral corticoid area, um, that sodium, because aldosterone is no longer absorbed, sodium is actually excreted through the urine, um, and it results in a hyponatremic state um, and um, decreased blood pressure. Um, as well, we end up with hyperkalemia, um, so too much potassium within the blood, which recall back to our neurological system that affects the resting membrane potential um, and decreases the excitability, resulting in things like bradycardia. 
The nurse returns from the conference and uses her newly acquired knowledge to help the patient understand how her symptoms relate to the diagnosis of Addison's disease. So does that help clear up everything for you? Yeah, that helps me better understand my symptoms. Definitely helps. Who loves physiology? We love physiology! Key concept number one, protein! Cell membrane! <laughs> Homeostasis! Physiology! <laughs>